people will suffer through a lot of other uncomfortable issues in their relationship if the sex is great. Susan Bratton, I gotcha. And I am <laughs> so excited to connect with you. Thank you so much for joining us. You've caught me in your lair, Brad. Indeed, which is not easy. <laughs> you're, you're a high energy human. And if my listeners are not familiar with your work and your style, it is time to buckle your seatbelts up, people. And I think my um, my favorite starting point here is how um, our our culture still is so uptight and and backed up and uh, sort of rudimentary about the subject of relationship intimacy. And so I want to give you great credit for blowing the doors wide open. And here we go. We're going to start our engines and start talking about this and. Make sure see if we can get a better life out of it. That sounds good. Yeah, um, I think things are changing rather quickly, actually, with regard to that. But there's still a lot of shame and religious repression and lack of education, which creates not enough knowledge, which generates fear. There's a lot of performance anxiety. Um, you know, all of those things really. But but what's beautiful is that we humans we want loving, connected, intimate, passionate, lovemaking. We crave it. We want it. And so for, and, and what's interesting too, Brad, you said something earlier to me just before we started the show that your fans are peak performers and so are mine, especially healthy ones. Mm. You know, I like to fish where the fish are and the fish are healthy people who believe in personal development and who want to live their absolute best life passionately. Like that's my people and your people because the people who are fit and healthy, libido is the same, same side, so, the other side of the same coin as your health. You just don't have a libido if you're not healthy. So the people who are healthy and have desire and know that they're performance oriented, they're the people that are like, oh, teach me sex techniques, teach me mm. bedroom communication skills, teach me about sexual biohacking, teach me sexual regenerative therapies. Those are my areas of expertise and they are smack dab in the middle of peak performance. Yeah, and I guess you kind of have to break free from that hectic high stress life where you have your litany of excuses and things that get in the way. And so intimacy is pushed aside um, and I don't know how to kind of um, hack that problem because I do when the yeah yeah let's let's hear it because when the topic comes up and uh, you know I get into discussion with people who've been in a long term relationship or what have you, mm -hmm. um, you usually get the sense that oh my gosh uh, you know that's on the back burner because we're still arguing so much about our credit card bill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, they say sex and money, them's, <laughs> them's the rubs, aren't they? <laughs> um, here's what I found. And, and though I, I support gender expression across the rainbow sparkle spectrum, um, most people, the large majority of people are in heterosexual monogamous relationships. There's a dude and his lady. <laughs> and so if you're not in the dude and his lady category, you're going to get 99% of the benefit of this conversation, but it's just easier to have the male female paradigm conversation. And really what you asked me, which is what so many people ask is there's a mismatched libido in our relationship. And mm -hmm. it's, it's often that the man wants more sex than his female partner. Less and less, that's the case. I'm seeing more and more where women are frustrated with their male body partners. And, you know, testosterone's been taken a nose mm. dive. We've got a lot of toxic situations in our food and water and air supplies, and it's taken us all down. So certainly what we have to be doing is working out every day, eating well, and detoxifying, no matter who we are, because we live in the world today. And those things all affect us. But if you look at why it is that it's so common that men want more sex than women do in long-term relationships, why is it so easy for her to give it up and why can't he? It's, it's a couple of very simple things that are 
totally easily fixable. Mm -hmm. Number one. <laughs> Number one is guys are lucky because you get a, a flush of testosterone in the morning. And if you're healthy, which your listeners are, there's morning wood and you men are kind of biologically wired to masturbate on a daily or multi-time weekly basis. That's very normal uh, because you've got to keep your sperm topped up and fresh in case there's a possibility mm. for you to, you know, generate your biology. Um, these are just, these are basic biology things. And then you have something called fast acting hemodynamics. Your penis gets hard really fast compared to your male, your female body partner. So she doesn't have as much testosterone. She's not masturbating every day like you are because she's mm. not, it's not demanded of her biology. Uh, she goes into her, you know, cycles. And honestly, women run with the moon their whole lives, even after menopause. And her, though she has the same amount of erectile tissue in her genital system, she's got three erectile chambers. You have three in your penis. And if you, if I, if I had your listeners imagine a, a banana, half of a man's penis, that's, that's his penis. Half of it sticks out of his body, but half of it goes in and down toward his testicles, double the size of what you see and mm. to peel that banana. It's all erectile tissue in there. Mm. So there's three straight shots. So you're always thinking about sex. And then when you think about sex, if you're healthy, you get a hard on and you're ready to go. She's got a little bit different arousal cycle, if you will, or arousal ladder is what I like to call it. Number one. And you mentioned this stress. Our arousal begins in relaxation. Mm. And so many of our partners are already ready. They're already turned on and they're trying to get us turned on, push our knobs and spin our dials and get us going. When actually the very first thing that we need is to be relaxed. And he's like, but if I relax her, she'll fall asleep. She won't after a while because she's going to start liking sex with you again. So the, the, the number one thing is that it takes her 20 to 30 minutes to get all the blood flow into her vulva that's going to make sex feel as good for her as it does for you. Hmm. The reason she stops wanting sex is that it doesn't feel as good to her as it does to you because it's often been rushed. And it's been rushed because women are conditioned to do what they're supposed to do like good girls. And if mm. he's got an erection, he needs to have intercourse. We have this religious lineage of sex is for procreation only. And so intercourse is really the only thing that sex is. All the rest is foreplay. Well, it turns out the foreplay is all the stuff that we need to actually get turned on for intercourse. Mm. But it's skipped because we're trying to keep up with our partner rather than our partner slowing down and getting us where we need to go. So we want to ask him for sex again. And so those are honestly the most common things. And so the two things I tell couples to solve this problem, well, the, the first thing is slow down, turn around and come and meet her back where she is, right? Now that you're like, oh, okay, I didn't even realize that. All right, great. Number one is getting your woman to allow herself to slow down and receive the pleasure she needs to get turned on. And the pleasure that she needs to get turned on is three critical things. The very first is kissing. And if she doesn't like to kiss you, you guys need to work on your kissing because it is super important. There's a three-legged stool. There's so many in the world that are, you know, the three-legged stool is the most stable platform. The three legs of the turn-on stool for the ladies is kissing, breast play, and Women are ashamed of their breasts. They see all these perfect fake boobed pictures everywhere and they think their saggy boobs or their small boobs or their too big boobs or whatever because estrogen makes us very judgmental because it's the molecule of protection and safety because we females are prey, not the predator. And so we look at our bodies and we judge them and you know we, we don't let you touch them. And then we miss number two thing that turns us on, those two things stimulated start getting the blood flowing into all those erectile tissue systems of our vulva. So if you take that banana and you turn it into a circle and make a point at the top, you peel back the skin from between her legs and stick it in there around her vagina, that's what her erectile tissue system looks like. It's as big as your banana right in there underneath the skin. But the problem is that 
we we think it's just the tip of the clitoris and we're, we're oriented toward stroke that clitoris really fast, get it going, give her an orgasm and then penetrate her long before she's ready. And so when we have this notion that sex is intercourse and everything else is foreplay and we miss all that mm. and we don't have the kissing and the relaxation and the breast pleasuring and then the yoni massage, the manual pleasuring of her vulva, the mons, the outer labia, the inner labia, the foreshad, the clitoral hood, not just the tip and the entrance to her vagina. When she gets all of that tissue pleasured, when you have a yoni massage practice, yoni being the Sanskrit word for the female genital mm. system. You know, I could say vagina, but that's only one part. And it's kind mm. of like focus on the, I could say the clitoris, but it's not the tip. And that screws people up. I could say the vulva, but that's just the outside. It's the face of her genital system, not the inside. We really want to get into the whole erectile tissue, the clitoral, urethral, and perineal sponges that are in there. If I took those out, and I had you hold your hands open, your palms open, like, like a beggar with a bowl, I could lay all that tissue on her, on your hands, and it would cover your hands mm -hmm. with erectile tissue. That's probably, likely, never been completely engorged more than once or twice in her life when she was super turned on, had a long makeout, had a yoni massage, or had some incredible oral pleasuring, or whatever it might be. And so... That's number one. Number one is getting her erection ready. Number two is she needs a lot of novelty and variety, romance and pleasure, you know, uh, things outside the bedroom as well as inside the bedroom. It can't just be grab her and stick it in. And often that's what she feels like it is for mm -hmm. her. And so these are the tricks. Do fun things. Uh, one of the things I just created was something that's, it's a free download. It's called the Sex Life Bucket List. It's at sexlifebucketlist.com. You can mm. put it in your show notes. And it's 48 erotic play dates. When we get out of this mindset that we're going to have sex and that means intercourse and that means he's going to penetrate me again and I still don't have orgasms from it and now I've got to mm. do it because it's my duty and he's going to be a grumpy poo if I don't. It gets away from all of that and it starts to make sex a fun exploratory learning experience together that increment, increments your skill set. You find out the things that might be of interest to her. Oh, you mean intercourse orgasms are a learned skill? Well, I'd like to learn that with you. Okay, honey, let's let's learn that. Um, and these are all, I teach all of these different 48 mm. things, but it gives you a place to start to reinvigorate the novelty and variety of your sex life so you feel like teenagers again. So once you know, okay, I got to slow down and really get her lady boner. Mm. And I got to do some fun stuff. I got to show up not grumpy and pissed that I haven't been getting sex, feeling mm. in my victim mentality, showing my anger, the two allowed male emotions, which is a disservice we have to men. Mm. It's nobody's fault. We just didn't know what we didn't know. When you get going on those two things, all of a sudden she's making dates with you. It seems like just being aware of how things work, as you just described, could uh, you know lead to a breakthrough. And I'm also going to ask you, like, how important is this healthy sex life to a winning relationship? And I wonder if you have naysayers saying, "Wait, Susan, I'm still talking about the credit card bill that I asked about, you know, many times back, and how therapists spend so much time just getting couples to communicate, but." You mentioned that word, you know how to hack things. And it occurs to me that like, maybe a couple could jump right to this, even though they still have a lot of excess baggage and things that are they're facing with everyday life. But if they could rekindle a healthy sex life, maybe some of those conversations about the credit card bill and the, um, you know, the, uh, the, the nuts and bolts could go a lot better. That's right. Exactly right. Of course. Yeah. I mean, people don't, people will suffer through a lot of other uncomfortable issues in their relationship if the sex is great. <laughs> I wonder how 
uh, common that is. It seems like it would be incredibly uncommon. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm off. Great I sex, think lousy relationships. People, yeah, I think generally people aren't having the kind of sex they deserve to have. Mm. Um, certainly my fans and followers are because they're active learners and they're trying new things and their sex life is important to them. And they're finding a way, for example, to get their wife to be willing to try new things with them, um, opening her to her sexual potential, um, being her sexual trainer. I literally have a program that's called the Seduction Trilogy. That's three books and uh, audiobooks, And it's how to be, her, uh, it's the seduction, seducer tonight, the seduction accelerator and how to be her sexual trainer, like how you can show up as the man that's going to allow her to surrender to her pleasure so that she can expand her orgasmic potential and her joy and heart connection with you. And it's step by step by step. Uh, guys really like steps. They like, mm. just tell me, I love to work with men and I don't work with anybody one on one. Now I'm a publisher of passionate mm. lovemaking techniques bedroom communication skills and i teach sexual regenerative therapies and sexual biohacking and i'd love to define the difference for your audience of those two things if we could parking lot that but uh what i do is i i give you the steps i tell I explain what it is and give you the steps so you can go do it same with a program i have called revive her drive <laughs> um and each one of these things that i'm talking about whether it's the seduction trilogy or re revive her drive. There's a lot of free things that you can get. There's always more that you can buy, but I give away so many techniques because our sex life is so, um, there's a lot of, we have a lot of fear around our sexuality, mm. around, our, around our sex life, around our performance, around our connection, around our wanting and our desire that I have found that when I can give you something, so if you go to Seduction Trilogy, you get a, an ebook called More Sex More Often that teaches you how to make smaller offers to your woman. Because mm. when you offer her sex and she's like not even turned on yet and you've got a raging boner, she's, she's a no. And so then you feel rejected and you feel like you're unwanted and then you stop asking and then that creates the divide and she wants to have hot, passionate sex with you, but you have to slow down and come meet her, right? So... Uh, you get more sex more often there. And then with Reviver Drive, I give you three reports, um, the 21 mistakes you may be making that are ruining your sex life and um, a number of different techniques so that you understand how to meet her where she is and move her forward. Um, just, you know, kind of stop shooting yourself. The things you're doing that are shooting you in the foot and how not to do those and what to do instead is basically what it is. Because um, I always say that when you got married, if sex was good when you got married, mm. you can get it. You can not only get it back again, but have a renaissance in your sex life. And you can do that a couple times in your marriage. I mean, you're married 10, 20, 30, 40 mm. years. You, you, like any couple, you go through stuff. Trees fall on your house, as it were, metaphorically. And so uh, you got to be fixing that stuff together. And it happens. So people have illnesses they have to recover from. I mean, that just, you know, that ruins everything for a while. So mm. I really like to give people what I call little hinges that swing big doors, right? Oh, wow. I did that one thing and I got a great reaction. What else does she have? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like we're getting some, some important takeaways, especially uh, males. It's time to elevate your game from just being uh, wanting it Beggar more than your bowl. partner, not really paying attention. And it seems like uh, what you describe on the female side of having that lack of deep fulfillment and feeling obligated due to cultural programming or what have you, um, that could possibly even be subconscious. Like the female not might not even be aware that they're just not in the mood that much. And the male might not know why. And I think it comes to uh, back to your work where if a couple could so much as just download some of your some of your things yeah. and and learn about um, you know the the males got to got to raise their game and do more uh, wooing throughout the day and then spending more time to uh, get that arousal on the female clock rather than the male clock. Yeah, it's funny. A a lot of therapists use my programs because they're not taught any of these things in school. Mm. Unless you're a sexologist, and sexology is more for 
fringe cases, edge cases. It's more for like gender dysphoria or weird kinks and fetishes or, you know, people who seek sexologists for their problems tend not mm. to be your basic dude and his lady. Um, they tend to generally be people who have even harder issues. And so mm. there's just this paucity of knowledge in the marketplace about how to, what he needs and what she needs. One of the things that I've created is some, and I, I don't mean to be constantly talking about my programs, but it's just cut for me. Sometimes I never mention a single one of my programs. For some reason, I'm just thinking about certain things that I've created today because kind of, they fit into a jigsaw puzzle. You know, my first, this is my second career. I've been doing this for two decades. I became a sexpert because I didn't want to have sex with my husband anymore. Mm. I never had an orgasm from intercourse. I learned how with him, we figured it out. Then I went on to teach so many people and I said, we, we, we have to start a company teaching people how to transform having sex into making love that's passionate lovemaking, that's pleasurable for both people. It's so easy to learn. Let's put this stuff on the internet. And uh, so I've written a lot of books and programs over the year 44. <laughs> and um, one of them is how to ravish him and how to ravish her. How does a man want to be made love to? And how does a woman want to be made love to? They're very, very different. And one mm. of the core things is that he wants you to touch his penis right away. It's very soothing to him to have his penis touched right away. Because then he's like, okay, everything's going to be all right. Mm. <laughs> right? He's, he's calm, more calm. But she does not want to be grabbed by the young mm. That's mm. the last thing. She's not there. She's, mm. you got to start with the outside. You got to stroke her hair and kiss her and play with her boobs and rub her back and rub her feet and, you know, work for your way from the outside in. I call it my bullseye touch technique. You don't shoot for the middle. You work the outer rings in. And that's what warms us up because we're not where you are. We didn't have all that testosterone. We don't have a raging heart on. We're not super horny every day, but we, we are what is called responsive more than you are, which it, you are called spontaneous. <laughs> you know, sometimes we're spontaneous, but mostly we're responsive. But most men have to be ready when the woman is ready because you never know when it is. And so you can pretty much give it a go 24 seven. You are on call where she's not. Mm. She needs to be moved toward her pleasure. Uh, she needs to be calmed because she's the prey, not the predator. Mm. She needs to be brought into her body. She needs to be made love to. And um, that's just like, once you start to understand that, like, oh, geez, I guess that's true. You know, now that you're, now that you're saying it, it makes perfect sense, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it occurs to me that the, the male needs to be calmed too. And I learned, I think Dr. Kate Shanahan explained this, that um, arousal is a parasympathetic uh, yeah. function. And then orgasm climax is sympathetic, but you mm -hmm. start in parasympathetic state. So yeah. somehow, some way the man has to leave his stressful workday behind. And yes. typically it's pretty easy. I remember hearing my first uh, episode with you and my favorite quote, ladies, you got to smother that cock, smother that cock, lady. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. Did I say but, that? Uh, so we have, <laughs> we have disparate, you know, we have disparate uh, bedroom techniques going on. So the man <laughs> has to take his time and do all the the caressing and stroking but yeah. it, it did i take that right that the a hot tip for the ladies if they want to up their game is to just uh, go for the bullseye well, at least just start with your hand on his penis. It could be yes, go for the bullseye and and, and it could be one of the, my favorite foreplay and i don't even like the word foreplay and sex as you know i want it's all sex to me. But um, one of my favorite mm. kind of warm ups that really helps a woman get turned on is when you kind of are sitting side by side, lying side by side, and she's stroking his penis while he's kissing her and playing with her breasts and pleasuring her nipples. And they can talk and they can tell each other how much they love each other. And, you know, the verbal encouragement and adoration and appreciation and the relaxation and the kissing and the fondling. It's it, it lets you kind of get connected and it calms him because he's getting touched on his penis and it starts that kissing and nipple. It's called an everted erection. Everted means mm. from the inside out. Mm. And so often we just are like, I'm just going to stick my tongue on her clitoris or I'm going to rub it really hard or whatever, you know, just the tip. And it doesn't get all the other tissue engorged. But when the, when you do the kissing and the nipple play, it, 
it sends the blood down into her pelvic bowl and it really helps get her juices flowing. And that's what women, women really struggle with. They struggle with getting the juices flowing. They struggle with loss of lubrication. They struggle with painful sex, incontinence, and difficulty to achieve orgasm, increased difficulty achieving orgasm. And uh, I'd love to touch on some of the biohacking side of things too, because I think for many people, they're like, well, all that's well and good, but it hurts my wife to have sex. So like, I'm basically down and mm, out. And that's, that's not true. true at all, because there's so many things you can do. And they're so simple. So I think we should touch on that if you want to, but I'll go wherever you want to go. I think uh, that's the end of our show, listeners, I want you to go and if you're listening as a couple, um, put it on pause right now, and go lie down and do what Susan described, and then we'll check back with you. Okay, we're back to the show with Susan Bratton. Thank you. <laughs> and how did that go for everybody? No, I'm I'm seriously so. Um, I, I, it's 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 really wonderfully encapsulated. And that little description you just made could bring couples back together. And it seems seems like uh, you can have fun and curiosity and and try something out in a low pressure situation. You can blame it on Susan if things go go south, and you can listen to another show or get another download. But um, just just making the effort and increasing the awareness is really important, as you talked about at the start. Uh, you know, we've been programmed to be uptight and shy and insecure about this subject, and now it's 2023. It's time time to bust loose. So, yeah, let's let's go into the next uh, topic that you recommended here. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, what I like to do is I think another three-legged stool, Brad, is sex techniques, bedroom communication skills, and and intimate wellness. Mm. You have, the parts have to be working. You have to have a nice, firm penis that can get hard, go soft, get hard, go soft during a lovemaking session with, with total confidence. You have to have your stamina. And this is all manageable. It's not Oh, I'm just, I can't last or, oh, I've got ED. It's all manageable. Uh, and I, I already listed the issues for women. So, you know, the bre- the bedroom skills, the dirty talk, the, the and I, I don't even think it's dirty, it's sensual, the encouragement, the worship, the adoration, the appreciation, all those things are so, so you know, the feedback, what do I want today? What's, what's going on with my body? What are you in the mood for? Oh, I had a sexy idea I thought we could try, you know, that's as important as the, I understand how to give a yoni massage or a lingam massage, the lingam being the penis. Um, you know, I, 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 I know how to stroke a penis and make it really, really nice for him. And he loves it. I know how to put my hands on her vulva and get her fully engorged and give her lots of orgasms before I ever pleasure her orally or penetrate her. I mean, these are learned skills. So the third leg of that stool, a solid sex life is the notion that you can keep your genitals in good working order your whole life long. And how, how long, how long would you like to live, Brad? What's your, you know, what's your kind of health span number? Oh, my intention is to go to 123. The current record is 122. Okay. And I'm going to form the belief that it's as easy as 123. So that's my answer. And we know that we that. have the, we have the potential to do it. I'm not going to join Dave Asprey living to 180 because I think uh, that's bullshit, <laughs> but I, I do I do believe that our intentions and our, our belief systems are going to help us toward longevity and perhaps even sexual health, like, um, you know, not getting hung up about performance and just letting it go will predict success the next time rather than, you know, allowing these, these uh, you know, beliefs to form that you're, um, you're less than or, or whatever's going on. You've had uh, past experiences that have been suboptimal and you're carrying those with you in a backpack. Yeah, oh, I love your answer. Um, a and will things... I be able to get erections at that age, Susan? Because I, I better I better know yeah. where, where I'm headed here. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to tell you how to do that. Yeah, and I wonder, t- tell us, and then do you get pushback from like um, other resources that think that your sexual health just fizzles out along with your general health when you're 70 or 80 or 90 and that's the end? Well, of course, that's that's the ageist, you know, current um, paradigm. But what mm. I like to do is I like the reason I asked how old you want to be. And I loved your answer because I knew it was going to be badass, Brad. I knew it was going to be b rad. It's just realistic. That's all. I love it. Um, <laughs> And uh, what I like to talk about is we talk about extending our health span. And then what I like to do is talk about ageless sexuality, expanding our, our sex span. 
having great sex till the day we die. Because ultimately, your sex life is very similar to pr your personal growth. It's, it's, it's the other side of that same coin, too, where um, sex keeps getting better and better the older you get. At 61, mm -hmm. I'm having the best sex of my life. My biological age is um, 43.5, and I'm trying mm -hmm. to get that down below 40 right now. And I think I'm moving that needle down. I've been doing some new things I'd love to tell you about at the end. Mm -hmm. But um, there's two different things that you need to think about. There's sexual regenerative therapies, which bring you back to full function. And by that, I mean the full function you had when you were 20 or 30. I don't mean full function of a 40 year old, same as anything else. You can, you can be back to the, all the other people in your cohort, or you can go back to how you used to be when you were younger. And that's the, that's the place I strive mm. to stay, to go and to stay with my physical health and my sexual health and my mental health. And so that's the sexual regenerative. It's getting you back where you were. Then there's what I would call sexual biohacking, and that's taking it to the next level. Now, I'm a keynote at Dave's conference um, next month, and uh, I'm going to be doing something called Susan's Sexy Show and Tell. It's my sexual biohacking toolkit. And um, what I have done is I've essentially created, I, I'm like a, bion I have like bionic genitals. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm really, my, my genitals are incredible. Uh, I am a peak performer. Uh, <laughs> I have 20 kinds of orgasms. I have a full and voluptuous vulva. I'm massively well lubricated. Um, sex is so pleasurable for me. My erectile function is off the charts great. And so is my husband's. And he's his penis is bigger, badder, better than ever, ever incredible because he and I are sexual biohackers. So we're beyond where we were in our 30s. Yes, yeah, st uh, just stop for a moment and mention sure. how you guys were um, at a dead end, apparently. Yeah. And this is what launched you into this career. But mm -hmm. at what point was that? How long you've been married? Uh, the sex was stalling yeah. and you were even considering splitting up because of this. Yeah. 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 Tell us about that. This year will be, in June, next month, we'll be 30 years married. Um, I'm 61, and my husband will be 60 this year. It, we were 40, 42 when our marriage fell apart after 11 years of being married. Mm. So when I was 42, I couldn't have orgasms from intercourse. By the time I was 50, I was having amazing orgasms, but my body was starting to fail because of a gluten intolerance. I got rid of the gluten and built back better like Biden. <laughs> <laughs> I always love his phrase. And um, I am stronger than I've ever been. My DEXA scans show my, my muscle going up, my fat going down, my bone density going up. You know, like if DEXA, if there was a DEXA scan for orgasms, Brad, oh my God, I'd be blowing up their buses. <laughs> So how did I do this? How did he do this? What do we do? Well, um, there's a stack. You know, anytime you're talking about regenerative therapies or stacks, you're talking about multiple things that synergistically work together to re restore you to health. Mm. Certainly the very first thing is that I work out every day. Uh, the second thing is that we take nitric oxide supplements. We actually have a supplement company because we realize how important it is. And I am an organic girl. So I make an organic nitric oxide booster called flow. I'd love to send you some, mm. I'll give you a link to put in your show notes. It's B U Y F L O W N O W by flow. Now you can get it there. That's my podcaster discount, uh, one for listeners so they can get the cheapest rate when they hear about it. And that's the ground zero for genital function is mm. you've got to keep your nitric oxide systems topped up because we have less nitrites in our vegetables, even if we're eating the leafy greens and the beetroot. Many people have ruined their oral microbiomes through antibacterial mouthwashes, so they can't convert the nitrites to nitrates. And then a lot of people have acid reflux, they're taking proton pump inhibitors and acid blockers, mm. so they're ruining their gastric juices so they can't convert the nitrates to nitric oxide so they can't get the blood flow where they need it to go so i talk to a lot of men about getting off of viagra cialis levitra etc by topping up their nitric oxide or at least mm. lowering their dose to micro doses sublingually so they don't have to have the side effects of viagra with the headaches etc mm. but i like guys to get off of viagra completely if possible by adding on gains wave treatments or using something like the Phoenix at home device. 
the gains wave treatments are superior to any at home mm -hmm. device because they are. And I want to let you know that I am a spokesperson for gains wave and mm -hmm. Femi wave, which is the female equivalent. And also for the Dr. Joel Kaplan vacuum erection device company, the penis pumps, because I went to them and said, I need, I love what you're doing so much. I want to be out there telling people about it. I've got a big, I've got a big profile. I've got a lot of fans. I'm intimacy expert to millions and it's for realsy. And uh, I, I really want people to know about this. And they're like, oh, wow, that would be great. What is a spokesperson? I'm like, I don't know, but we'll figure mm -hmm. it out. And that was four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. And I have great relationships with them. I, help, I have helped so many people find their way to these therapies. They didn't even know they existed. So they, they deal with, you know, like, oh, I guess I just, I guess I'm broken. No, you're not. Mm. You are repairable. And that's what regenerative therapies do, like Gaines Wave and Femi Wave. They're acoustic wave applied to the genital tissue that stimulates new tissue growth. Throw on a penis pump from, I, there's a pump I like called the Whopper. And I have a, I have a book called The Pump Guide. It's at pumpingguide.com that's had over 40,000 downloads. Mm. I've gotten so many, you saw me on the Mark Bell Power Project um, talking about how effective penis pumps are for not only reversing atrophy, doing the regenerative piece, but moving you into biohacking by increasing the size of your manhood. They're still talking about it on the girth. Power Project months later after you left. <laughs> every, every session, they find a way to mention <laughs> That's so funny. I know because it, it works. Yeah. Uh, and I'm glad they do that because people believe Mark and Nasima and Andrew. They're good, they're good men and they want the best for their fans, just like I do. And so I'm glad they're continuing to talk about it because the more people who know this $200 at home thing, I call it hashtag self-care down mm -hmm. there. <laughs> and I just think if people knew about it, and you know, I have a lot of couples now where so for for men, it's Gaines Wave and the Whopper. For women, it's Femi Wave and something that is called the V Fit that I that I call a vagina device. It's at vaginadevice.com. Try and give you as many resources as I can when I'm when I'm talking to you. And um, because people hate it when they're like, what, what was that thing? Mm. So uh, the vagina device is a red light therapy device, an at-home red light therapy device that goes inside the vagina. The Femi wave, if you can go out and get that, is more powerful. But if you can't, it's not near you or you don't want to, there's the at-home device that's B-Fit. That's a very good vagina device for increasing lubrication, reversing incontinence, thickening the vaginal mucosal lining, getting rid of that painful sex problem, helping uh, just kind of get everything engorged and full of blood again. It doesn't help with outer labia. It doesn't help with anything on the clitoris itself. That's why I like the Femi wave because the Femi wave mm. goes on the mons, the labia, the clitoris, the perineum. It does all those things. Plus it helps with increasing your orgasmic intensity and plumping up the vulva so it looks youthful. Because for us women, just like a... All women say you can never be too rich or th too thin. All men say you can never have a penis that's too big, right? But we women want a beautiful vulva. We don't want it to age. And Femi Wave actually is mm. plumps it up again too, which is a wonderful side side benefit of Femi Wave. So the the nitric oxide the shock wave or acoustic wave, the at-home devices, the Phoenix and the vagina device, these are good things. Those are, and the pumps, the pump is just incredible. Like if you could only do one thing, you should take nitric oxide and eat your greens, right? Like that's almost like a no brainer. If you can only do one thing as a dude, you can't do anything. You got 200 bucks for a pump. That's what I like about it. Um, for women, it's, I think the vagina device is, is super mm. helpful. And that's about $400. Sometimes they have sales, but uh, you can go on there and get on their mailing list um, and wait for a sale. But those two things are just incredible. And so what they really do is they can not only take you back to where you were, but mm. they can you can go even bigger and better. And then the last piece of it is really the PRP stem cell exosome mm. world, right? The injectables. And I have done many rounds of PRP into my clitoral and urethral and perineal erectile tissue structures. Um, I have a nice big fat clitoris that's super healthy and highly orgasmic. It's wonderful. 
And lately I've been waning on my interest in PRP and increasing on my interest in exosomes Mm. because PRP is naturally inflammatory. It actually is, it uses hormesis. It creates a bit of, you know, it it like tells your body it's been wounded. So it comes and rebuilds. Not a bit, a lot. uh, the, The PRP in my heel was extremely painful. I don't know if they do that into the penis. I'd be, I'd be reluctant because of the pain, but yeah, it's 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 healing by natural inflammation stimulation. Exactly. Yeah. I um I recently uh, so it doesn't hurt as much, but you will find yourself you'll have a it doesn't hurt. The PRP in your penis doesn't hurt. Mm. The PRP in your clitoris doesn't hurt. Mm. But you I find that I have a drop in my orgasmic intensity during the healing process and then and then it improves. But I recently did an interesting split test. So I I had this epiphany recently that I've I've sustained some soft tissue damage recently, and I think it's a long haul COVID downstream mm. issue that I'm trying to repair with peptide therapy and collagen and lots of other things I'm doing for soft tissue uh, regeneration. But uh, I pull I pulled the um, epicondylitis here, the mm. the uh, the medial uh, tendon off my elbow. Mm-hmm on both sides. I think I did it flipping tires and lifting too heavy a weight and Mm. not recruiting enough muscle and relying on my joints. And I strained those tendons. So I got Regenix PRP, the 16 time concentration PRP in my elbows. And though it's healing it very well, it was painful. My arms were on fire for weeks. It was not pleasant and it was slow. So I decided to to go a different route when I fell skiing. I fell in the super easy way. I heard my skis not, they didn't release. I was was literally going so slowly. My skis didn't release. And I heard, and I went, oh, crap. I tore both ACLs right at the the center and just a little tear on each. So I went to my friend, Dr. Jeffrey Gross at Recelebrate in Vegas. And he put me under and he drilled needles through my leg bones, both the femur and the tibia, right out where the ACLs grow out. He went in and right out to where, because our bones grow our ligaments. Mm -hmm. Our ligaments aren't separate. We think about, we think about them in categories like bones, tendons, ligament, but the ligaments are actually part of the bone. Mm. And so our hope is, and I don't know yet. See, I play with all this stuff. This is why I'm a biohacker. Uh, our hope is that my body will regrow the ligament back where it got torn by stimulating new growth right from the bone out into the ligament. So he was very precise in how he entered the exosomes in there. And the exosomes are basically in the PRP stem cell exosome category of regenerative therapy where Uh, what it does is it's more of a signaling molecule to your body to repair. So instead of, it's kind of like, I call it a cleaner fuel than PRP. It's kind of like you skip the inflammatory step and you just got the step where it releases the, you know, call to come repair. And so I'll let you know, but it, even though he had to drill my bones, it was, you know, five days of some pain not even really as much pain as the darn PRP in my elbows. And uh, it seems to be healing well. And so I'm going to do a post-operative, a post-procedure. It's not an operation. It's just a procedure. It's just a little outpatient. You wake up and you go home. Mm. Um, I'm going to do an MRI in a couple of months and see how much tissue I've gained in the ligaments. Because the only other way to fix that stuff is to have an operation Mm. that's quite invasive with cadaver ligament. And I got to get back on the slopes, Brad. I'm getting back on, I'm on, I'm already on the slopes. I'm quantum on the slopes already, (laughs) you know? (laughs) So I'll let you know how it goes. But uh, I'm playing with, I'm playing with the, I think the stem cells might be overkill. I think the axisomes Mm. might be the, might be the trick. So we'll, Mm. we'll see what happens, but I'm a real believer in growing your body back again. Like if I get an Mm -hmm. injury, I just fix it. Whatever it is, I am committed to repair and regeneration. I love regenerative medicine and I love sexual regenerative medicine Mm. and sexual biohacking tools and technologies.
So that's that's uh, one distinct category is your uh, how your how your plumbing system is working. And then we have this concept of libido. And I want to ask you, like, mm -hmm. is there a direct association between your male or female hormone status and libido and, and also your sexual function? In other words, is there another track that's mm -hmm. like purely psychological where you're arguing too much or males, you don't have your A game in place. And so you're always wanting to go uh, for, for the for the bullseye instead of listening to Susan's advice. And therefore, um, libido is diminished for things independent of the physiology, I guess. I'm not sure I understand your question. Can you ask me in a different way? Yeah, like is, is libido um, dependent upon uh, your psychological factors as well? Where you might have you might have excellent sexual function if you went in and got tested, but yeah. your sex life is in ruins because you're arguing too much and your technique is poor. Yeah, the guy can get it up for his mistress, but not his wife because he's mm. pissed at her. Of course, mm -hmm. <laughs> of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> sex is a head game, right? It's not just a body game. Of course, it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So and and how much is hormone? Are hormones a factor? A lot of people think it's like the factor. I think it's mm. a factor. I mean, your libido is a direct reflection of your level of health. So I know how healthy I am so exquisitely by my turn on. When I feel good, I am a horny little girl. When I don't feel well. I have no interest. I can't get it up. So I love that it's that my libido, my, because I have a good libido and a good sex life and a great husband and a, you know, all of that is so nice for me that if, if I'm not in the mood, I'm like, okay, what's, what's going mm. on physically for me? What's, mm. what's happening? Um, yeah. So I love that libido is the other side of the same coin of our overall health and hormones certainly feed into it. So do neurotransmitters. So does stress. So does sleep, all that stuff. So you gotta, it's, it's multifactorial for sure. And, um, I'll tell you, I do testosterone replacement, which I absolutely love. And, um, I do estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone, all three. Mm. Uh, and recently I have been, uh, going to work out every day at, at my, at my studio, at my gym. And then I've been leaving and going to this new longevity center. And I've been riding the Vasper machine three times a week. And that is fantastic for the endocrine cascade of growth hormone and testosterone, lowering nighttime cortisol to improve recovery. I, if you uh, want to meet Sebastian Wazowski, he's the son of the founder. He runs it now. I'd love to introduce you. It's such an interesting technology. I'm absolutely in love with it. It's literally, I mean, I've worked out every day for the last couple of years to recover from long haul COVID. Mm. And I've been building my muscles. I've got, I've got some pretty nice muscle. I got to show you my guns. Um, I'm I have a, I have Those a of you on YouTube are I'm watching Susan undress now. I'm literally taking my clothes off for you, but look, that's rock rock solid if you're not it watching on youtube it looks pretty good doesn't it yeah yeah that's not there's, bad. i'm 61 there's a body on the screen right now people <laughs> watch out and also a nice tan that. for uh, you got the san diego tan going here i don't think yeah. I, I don't think i have much of a tan i don't think i have much of a tan <laughs> it's probably just the lighting but um i'll tell you something i didn't get those guns till i started doing vasper and i what was is vasper before, can you describe that yeah. I'm a tall woman. I'm 5'11". So I'm mm. I'm tall. And so, you know, when you're tall, it's harder to build big muscle, right? Mm. You're, you just got these longer muscles, sh shorter people do better bulking up. So I've never been, I've never been big, strong, bulky. I've never popped a bicep in my life as much as I've tried. <laughs> and I worked out religiously for the last two years, every single day, except the days when I'm either traveling or not feeling well enough or what have you, but I work out on a daily. Love it. And I started doing Vasper a month ago and all of a sudden, all of my body just started popping, popping. I couldn't believe, and what's, here's what's interesting about it. So what Vasper is, it's kind of like a Nordic cross meets an Xer bike that does high intensity interval training. You do sprints. Mm -hmm. 20 minute sprints. They say it's a, you know, it's, it's a piece of exercise equipment. And uh, they say that it, um, uh, it's like a 20 minute workout. It's like an hour's worth of working out in the gym in 20 minutes. But what I really like it for, it uses blood flow restriction, the mm. Katsuban strategy. 
but it cools down. You sit on a cold seat, your feet are on cold pedals, and you've got blood flow restriction on your upper arms and your upper thighs that is cooling the blood in your extremities, slowing down the return to the hearts to increase lactic acid. The lactic acid is what your pituitary gland uses as a signal to release growth hormone. So really, bodybuilding, muscle building, is the biggest benefit of muscle building is the release of growth hormone, testosterone, mm. the, the entire endocrine cascade that comes from building muscle. And what I love about it is that it, when you build muscle using Vasper, it lays new muscle tissue on the muscle tissue. It doesn't tear it down like weight weight bearing stuff does it doesn't do mm. hormesis uh, i tear it down to make it bigger that's what the pump does that's what almost everything does it, it's like it da it does a little damage that you heal to make it stronger so the vasper is building muscle on my muscle all over my body equally it's not like i am doing isolated bodybuilding it's mm. more like it's going everywhere it's laying down muscle everywhere I am absolutely in love with that thing. And I, after I do it, you lay on a mat for 10 minutes, a cold mm. mat. And then I go into the cryo room. Mm. It's negative 124 for five minutes. I chill everything down, which has been great for the inflammation from my skiing accident. Mm. And then I go lay on a, something called the Novothor, which is a red light bed. It's kind of like the old tanning bed. It's got the clamshell you lay down in, but it's infrared light mm -hmm. and that stimulates the mitochondrial growth and it the three of them have really begun to repair my skin damage from covid at a level that nothing was fixing it and now my skin is starting to literally unwrinkle before my <laughs> eyes in a single month so it's very seldom that you find modalities that are visibly working that you can feel and see in such a short amount of time. And so I was excited to tell you about it because I know you have so many fitness enthusiasts that are your fans. So I just, I, you know, I've got no association with the company or anything. I just want to spread the word that like, if you have any injuries, use the Vasper. You don't, you can't hurt yourself either. You know, mm. that's interesting. The use of the cold, temperatures on, on the seat, the pedals, whatever, because uh, we learned yeah. from the RTX cooling glove research that if you keep the body temperature stable, you can perform vastly more work because the, the, exactly. you know, the key, perhaps the key driver of fatigue during exercise is your body temperature elevating, your brain's very, very sensitive, and it will shut you down as anyone who's run 10 miles in the hot sun and they go slower and slower, you will, you will turn down all athletic performance mechanisms when your body temperature climbs. So if you're able to yeah. work out in that chamber and then go straight into the, uh, the the cryo, you're literally reducing the overall stress impact of the workout while still giving your body a workout. It's, I, I don't know anything about it, but it's, it's, it sounds like a great idea on the surface to to bring cold into the mix. And my own personal relevance is like when I'm sprinting and it's really cold out, of course, you have to warm the body up so that you don't damage your joints, connective tissue. But then the workout is much less stressful. And I've worked out in 32 degree, sunny, yeah. warm, I mean, sunny, sunny weather, but you know, very cold, freezing cold. And the sprinting is is much easier than even in ambient temperature of 72, or not, let alone anything that's near warm. Your body just tires out so quickly. Yeah, yeah, beautifully said. Thank you for adding that you know, additional insight into why it's working so well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's some cool stuff. I love all of these new, you know, like the VO, the live O2s and the cell gyms. And the, I mean, there's just so many new, the ATX or whatever it's called. There's just so many new uh, strategies to help people who, especially people who haven't who don't have the luxury to work out every day, who, um, mm -hmm. you know, feel nervous about going into a gym to work out, don't mm -hmm. know the first thing about putting themselves through a program or what have you. It's, we are blessed with innovative biohacking technology in this day and age right now.
And back to the bedroom, everyone, where Susan's Let's most go. comfortable. So that first three-legged stool, yeah. uh, we had the kissing, we had the uh, playing with the breasts, and then the, yeah. what was the third leg? Uh, pleasuring the external uh, yoni. Oh, yeah. So okay. getting so, the blood flowing to the yoni from the outside, not just from the inside. So you're doing it from the inside out and the outside in. Right. And then the other three-legged stool was uh, getting your sexual technique optimized, um, bedroom communication skills. Yes. And then uh, sexual wellness, where you went off yeah. into the the biohacking sphere, but mm -hmm. um, it, it's appealing for for many listeners to realize that you know the most leaps and bounds. It, it seems like the communication and just opening up the, mm -hmm. uh, the 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 privacy and the hesitation and the shame and the guilt and all these weird things that we attach to sexuality yeah. would be a fantastic first step. Yeah. like you did with your husband. And so maybe take us back a little bit to the point where there was some uh, frustration, exasperation at your dead yeah. end. And then something, the, the floodgates opened until until uh, present day at 61, when she's setting records for her uh, orgasmic test results. <laughs> I love it. You're such a good summarizer. Um, <laughs> I'm really enjoying doing the show with you. Thanks so, again so much for having me. Oh, you're really, a, you're a really great host. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if if anyone's bored right now, I mean, you could be a, a number of things, maybe alarmed, shocked, uh, whatever. But if you're bored, you got real problems, people. So let's keep listening. We're having a great time here. Super important topic too. One of the things that I found is that people can really handle the truth. We have a society that we we avoid, we whitewash, we stuff, we work around, we stonewall, we do anything but tell the damn truth. When my husband and I were going through this crisis, this marital crisis, where we were thinking, should we get a divorce? And then we said, well, let's try and fix it. It's our sex life. Let's see what we can do. One of the things that we'd done at that time was we'd read a book by Brad Blanton called Radical Honesty. And we said, boy, in order for us to fix this, we're going to have to tell the truth to each other, mm -hmm. no matter how hard that is for either of us to hear what's going on. And we just started getting really, really honest with each other. And honesty is a funny thing. It's actually the hardest part about being really honest is it's two things. Number one, it's breaking the habit of being a friggin' liar. You lie about stuff all the time. We're societally conditioned to just gloss over, mm. stuff it, hide it, change mm. it. Oh, it's fine. No problem. Mm. See, secretly you're seething, you know, that mm. kind of thing. That's number one. And number two is that it's our own picayune foibles. It, foibles. It's our own, you know, greed, embarrassment, you know, it's all of our own issues that we want to lie and cover up our own imperfections that we want to cover. It's usually not the stuff about our partners. It's usually our, that's easy to talk about <laughs> when, we when we get honest. Exactly. So we just started getting really like radically honest in a kind and positive way, but we practiced honesty and that's what really opened things up for us in the bedroom. So one of the little books that I wrote that I give away is something called the Sexual Soulmate Pact, P-A-C-T. After decades of helping people, giving them ideas. So what happens when you, so my business is really, I send out a sex tips newsletter. Mm. And anybody who gets it, if they reply to any email that I send them, it goes into my inbox. I have a care team that's been with me for over a decade, but I get all the personal replies and people are like, hey, can I ask you a question? Yes, of course, you know, tell me the story, what's going on. And I give them advice. And my number one thing that I write is report back, like go try this thing mm. and come back to me and tell me how it went because I'm learning from your experiences. I'm not a therapist. I literally publish passionate love and write passionate love making techniques and bedrooms. This is what I do. So I collected the, what I called the six essentials for connected sex, sexual soulmates, the six essentials for connected sex. And the one most important of the six essentials is this sexual soulmate pack. So I carved it out of the book. You can buy the book on Amazon or whatever, but I carved it out and I give it away for free at sexual soulmate pact, P A C T dot com. It's like an agreement between partners. And what it really does is it fixes the problems that hold us back from saying what we need to say. I don't know what I want, so I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. I'm, I'm not happy that I can't, I don't have a better idea, so I'll just shut up. I'll put up. Uh, I'm afraid to hurt my partner's ego. So mm. if I say something to them, they 
they cave, they, they, they get crushed, they, they contract, they get pissed at me. It's not worth it. So I just keep my mouth shut. You know, there's like a million reasons we just keep our mouth shut and put up. And that doesn't make hot sex. And that's what I like to do. I like to make hot sex for everybody. So the Sexual Soulmate Pack does a couple of things. And you can download it and read it. It's a short little book. It's a little hinge that swings big doors. It really helps you and your partner if you read it together and you're like, let's, okay, I'm committed. Let's give it a try. Let's practice this. The number one thing is that we have to tune into our bodies more and know that what we want in every moment is constantly changing and that what we had and worked last time isn't going to work this time. And that we're always a new person every day. We're always mm -hmm. learning, growing, aging, accelerating, opening, you know, whatever. And so it's just what's happening right now for me. Today, I don't, I don't like you to have your finger in my, inside my vagina. Mm -hmm. But the last time I wanted all this massive G-spot pleasure, you know, it's like, so you're not doing anything wrong. Uh, everything is always right. I'm just telling you what my body's saying it needs. And when we can both get on to that page, like there, it's no blame game, it's just information. It's not failure, it's just feedback. And you get hungry for the feedback. And when you get feedback from your partner mm. and you just say, thank you. Thank you is the simplest thing in the world. We need to hear that, to be encouraged, to keep telling our truth. Mm. So that gets you over the, I know what I'm doing, or, oh no, I, I thought I was doing it right, but you're always telling me I'm doing it wrong, or whatever. Mm -hmm. It gets rid of that piece of it, right? So the sexual summit pact is an agreement between couples that does what I call explodes passionate lovemaking. And I think that's the honesty. And honesty is a practice. It is a learned skill. We don't learn it in our society at all. We don't learn it in our families. We don't learn about sex. And we don't learn about honesty anywhere. We have to decide we want to be the people who are authentic, vulnerable, honest, and ask for what we need. This is another issue. So many of us are so afraid that we won't be loved if we stand for ourselves, like, you know, when you do that, it doesn't work for me. Instead of, well, I just tried to make him happy, even though it made me mm. miserable. Like, mm. who are you helping? You're not helping yourself and you're not helping them because now they don't know how to make you happy because you didn't tell them. You just are sitting there being miserable like a freaking martyr. Mm. Nobody likes a martyr. Mm. And so it just gets rid of all this crap that we've kind of societally and systemically inherited that we must cut the cords on to live our full expression of self in our joy and connection boy if you can build the skill of saying thank you in the bedroom under sensitive circumstances because i think it's as uh, highly sensitive uh, you you could benefit greatly from you know leveraging that into the kitchen when you're loading the dishwasher wrong and instead of getting into the the uh you know the little dynamics that we we do that are so dysfunctional let's yeah. you know let, let's let's take it and, and and run with it yeah beautiful advice i love it thank you uh thank early you. on you talked a little bit about uh, masturbation is natural yeah. and the man wants yeah. to do it more than the female and uh, john gray the great author of men are from mars women are from venus yeah, series he had some interesting um uh, comments really strong about the adverse effects of masturbation and pornography today uh mm -hmm. relating to um your you know uh, flooding the dopamine pathways and making uh, real sex uh, less fulfilling satisfying you know uh, causing um uh, you know, uh, uh, impotence and erectile dysfunction. So I wonder how you uh, feel about this uh, hot topic today, especially when I think a lot of relationship dysfunction goes and default, uh, you know, detours into the world of pornography and, and artificial uh, uh, gratification, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think that um, I agree with John about pornography flooding the dopamine receptors, making it more and more difficult to have an erection in real life with a real person. I think pornography is big media that definitely um, preys on um, people's need for short-term masturbatory release. Um, and 
you know, it's like everything in moderation, but I feel, I think I said earlier that all, all we need is within us now, as far as our sexuality, uh, it's, it's really that our desire, if we allow our desire to build within us and to bubble up, we'll think of the things that will be pleasurable for us without even any outside influence or recommendation. If we understand that pornography is performative, it's patriarchal, mm. and it's doing a disservice to women, it's showing, I mean, Time Magazine had an article a couple of years ago where they sampled, a researcher sampled uh, 340 random clips of pornography and 96% of them showed uh, acts degrading to women. And that's where kids are getting their sex advice now. And it's a shame. I created a program a few years ago with Jaya called the Steamy Sex Ed Video Collection. It's eight videos. I'll, I'll send you a copy. Uh, I have a digital and I also have DVD because honestly, we still don't have broadband in America in rural areas. Mm. We're still working on our infrastructure. And so not everybody can digitally download stuff. So there's a lot of people out there who still need things on DVD. So I still provide it mm. because I like to reach reach everyone. And um, it's eight videos with over 200 passionate lovemaking techniques. They're heart-connected loving depictions of sexual techniques. There's like 40 oral techniques for her, 40 oral techniques for him. There's sex positions for pleasure. There's um, sensual massage and orgasmic massage. There's all these different things, technique after technique after technique that I built for couples to watch together. When you watch it together, it's they're relatable couples, demonstrating the the techniques and you can tell they're enjoying themselves and it's not it's not performative it's illustrative it's sexy but educational it's steamy sex ed that's what i called it because it's it's that and couples just love this because it gives them ideas i still to this day will watch it every you know year or so and just like, I just want to check in with this and, you know, kind of watch it again. And I'll say, oh my God, I know I never saw that technique before. I've watched this so many times and I still forgot about this technique and I'll do it to Tim and he'll be like, I love that. So you can only take it. You can't take 200 things in at once. Mm. So it's the kind of thing where you can kind of learn. And what I like to do is I like to say to couples, like put on the sensual massage one. Start, don't think you're an advanced lover you're not start with the, the video number one turn it on put it on your big screen on your tv in your bedroom if you have one or whatever and you're living lay your lover down you can turn the sound off put your music on and just follow along with what they're doing and do it to your partner and tell them what you're doing the mind body connection is powerful just like when you're lifting a weight and you're going i'm recruiting my bicep not my elbow tendon you know mm, mm. <laughs> this he's touching my inner labia that's what that feels like so then the next time when you're like wow i loved it when he was stroking my inner labia so gently just up and down almost like you were tickling it underneath a kitty's chin and you can say can you tickle my labia like that kitty chin thing again? That felt so good. And so what we do is we teach lovers to increment their skills and name them. Pick out your favorites. They all have names. It doesn't matter if you name them our name or another name. But so you can call, like, you know what I'd really like? I'd love you to do that. You know, Lord of the Rings. It's uh, mm -hmm. wrapping one finger around the base of the glands of his penis and the other around his testicles and then licking both parts <laughs> it feels so good to guys it's so delicious to them and they've never had that done because you've never thought of it you know this is like one of 200 mm. things so there's a difference to me there's nothing wrong with watching other people make love and learning techniques mm. there is something wrong with binging and addiction on pornography or not putting time into your sex life because you didn't learn how to make love to your mm. partner. So you have to watch porn to masturbate because you're filling the gap for the, the connection you don't have in your relationship. 
stop doing that. Take that time to focus on your relationship instead. It's it's not a crutch. It's a, a road to ruin, right? Mm-hmm. Very nice. How about uh, frequency as it relates to um, the, the the gossip world, uh, as it relates to you know optimal sexual intimacy, as well as yeah. through the age groups, because we've read even the the Taoist texts are you know saying this many times a week is optimal in your thirties, and then less in your forties, less in your fifties. I wonder where you stand on all that stuff. Yeah, that Taoist shit is two thousand years old, Brad. Uh huh. It's just as old as the 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 Masters and Johnsons crap. Come so we on. don't have to we don't have to retain our semen anymore. We can we can let it flow. Uh, there are some men when they ejaculate, it brings them down. It make it, they'll literally cry. It's depleting mm. to them. Mm. That's not most men. Everything on sex is a bell curve, and the big bell curve in the middle is I like to masturbate or get off every day, and ain't nothing wrong with it. So um, (laughs) to each their own, there is no perfect, everyone is different. However, how often should you have sex a week? Here's the only thing I know. I love sex now and I used to completely avoid it. I gave my husband mercy sex. I used every trick in the book not to have it. It wasn't my libido, it was shitty sex. Mm. I wasn't having good orgasms. Mm. Why would I want to have sex? I learned how. It didn't take long, and it's been getting better ever since. And now, unless I don't feel well, I want my man. So you're busy. How many times can you even squeeze it in? Can you make some erotic play dates? Can you, what's on your sex life bucket list? You know, what kind of techniques do you want to learn from your steamy sex ed video? Like when you start having play dates and learning, you're naturally going to want more sex. But here's what I look at. The live into 123 strategy. The Brad P123, as we now call it. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, there was a study. And it, 3,500 people were shown pictures, photos of human beings between the ages of 18 and 80 and asked to guess their age. And of the, all these pictures, there was this group of people that everyone kept guessing 10 years younger than their age group. Mm. And they called these people the super young. And they could not figure out what the correlation was until one day they said, we figured out what it is. These are the people that have intimate relations three times a week. And I'm like, okay, well, that's all I need. I'm going to look 10 years younger. And if you look at the Dunedin Pace Report, which was the longitudinal study out, out of New Zealand that tracked what it takes to, what are the biomarkers of the super, lo- the super livers, the super mm. long livers, it's um, grip strength, mm. balance, standing on one leg, cognitive function, sharpness, and looking younger than your cohort. So, uh, I mean, I'm always working on my grip strength. Mm -hmm. We're always working on standing on one leg and bouncing a ball against the wall and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Right. Uh, So, and like what I do keep, I'm writing three books at one time. I got no mental cognition problem. I got one little thing. I have a problem from a TBI and that's it. Mm. Uh, So looking young, I want to look young. I want to be beautiful and sexy till the day I die. And I hope the orgasm is what kills me. (laughs) (laughs) Boom, drop the mic. Boom. <laughs> oh my gosh, Susan. I did, say, I did say intimacy. I didn't say sex because when I say sex, mm. people think intercourse. Mm. And there are people for whom intercourse is off the table for some reason or another. Mm. And now go back and listen to the regenerative therapy thing because you can fix what's broken 90% <laughs> of the time, right? Mm. But I have a technique called the magic pill method. It's at magicpillmethod.com, no surprise. And it's for people who stopped having sex because of a health issue. Mental, physical, it's all interrelated. It's all one ball of wax. And they just stop being intimate at all. Like, I don't want to touch her because then I'll start something or I can't Mm. finish or whatever. And so the magic pill method is a structured process for helping couples come back from ceasing their intimacy to come back and figure out 
what's still on the table, what can we do, what did we used to do that I miss, what what could we go and get fixed so we could do this thing again, et cetera. And so I really like to use the word intimacy rather than sex because I don't want people to think mm. intercourse is the only thing that can keep you young forever. You can have lots of orgasms without penetration, but you can fix stuff and have penetration and have penetration orgasms and learn how to have them and love to have sex as much as your male bodied partner does. It's just a learned skill. Uh, you mentioned so many links and opportunities. Can we go to a single resource to connect with you and get your newsletter and then the downloads, the courses, learn yeah. all about? Yeah, yeah. You can go any one of those things that you opt into will get you on my newsletter and then that'll take you back to my website. And, you know, so anything I said, that was the mm -hmm. thing for you. And that's why I drop a lot of stuff because everybody's at a different place. I want yeah, the sexual yeah. soulmate pact. I want the pumping God. I want a bigger penis. I, I want the, I need the magic pill method, you know, whatever it is. I, I, I like the sex life bucket list. I think those are the ones I mentioned. Yeah. Any one of those will get you on your the list. You can reply to me anytime. I will happily answer any questions that you have. Um, but my main website is personallifemedia.com. Mm. My video website is betterlover.com. Uh, you can get all my email list there, both of those places, also at susanbratton.com. So uh, I am pretty easy to find on those interwebs, Brad. You got a lot of URLs. You were, you were early to the game. Fantastic. <laughs> oh my gosh. What a what Thank a you. wild show. We went in so many directions. It was really, really fun and interesting. You're You're right there on the cutting edge. You know, I think maybe the most profound thing that you said is libido equals health. Yeah. And I don't think the medical community, we don't talk about that enough, but it's like the best proxy for your overall general state of health, fitness, peak performance, especially mm -hmm. when the human's deepest biological drive is to reproduce. We're just animals, as you've said on some of your shows mm -hmm. in different contexts. But yeah. um, if that's suffering, I don't care how far down the road you are with your fitness yeah. regimen and your nitpicky diet, um, this is something that's super important to reawaken people in the name of general overall health, happiness, longevity. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. And it all starts in your gut. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. We don't have that going right. We're, right. we're in trouble, huh? That's, this where, is, that's the foundation. Uh, because of the impact on hormones, neurotransmitters, or maybe you should give us a little blip about that. Just everything. I mean, yeah. uh, your, your gut microbiome, which feeds your vaginal microbiome, your prostate mm. microbiome, your breast microbiome, it feeds your brain, it's everything. So if it's off, then you've got a cascade of poor health, everything mm -hmm. starts there. So it's, it's really about, um, and, and I honestly think that detoxification is key these days, we are mm. assaulted. So we can be eating as well as we can and all that kind of stuff. Honestly, when I go out to eat at a restaurant now, I don't feel well. And I, I don't think a lot of people cook their own food anymore. Yeah. I don't even like to eat it. We, uh, we, uh, I, we took my daughter out for, to the restaurant last night because we were leaving this house to go to our other house and I didn't want to go to the grocery store. We didn't have anything left. And they're like, let's just go out. She sneezed 30 times. Mm. And I was like, my tongue feels weird. Mm. You know, it's just uh, crappy food. We've got to, we've got to, we've got to feed and nurture ourselves. Stress, mm -hmm. detoxification and gut microbiome it's not it's not really your hormones that's a little tiny piece of it you could have you could have gone through menopause have no have no estrogen left mm. have a little tiny bit of testosterone and still be a horn dog if you're healthy mm. right mm -hmm. susan bratton everybody <laughs> i know brad we could go on that, forever that's I'll come back a anytime. wrap oh yeah we're gonna come, to we'll, come we'll we'll load you up with questions and and You're get fun. you on back we'll do a, we'll do yeah, a susan q a ask her <laughs> anything you can you can send it to us and we'll we'll compile them and go to town thank you so much God. for spending the time that's my favorite great it was da, a real da, pleasure da, to get to know you brad thank right you right on do do do